Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. Jane Porter saves Tog, one of the great apes, from Hister's deadly coils by killing the snake with her revolver. The sound of the shot carries to her father and his party at the cannibal trial, where they have convinced the cannibals that they are great medicine men. Believing that the shot signals the return of the cruiser, the white party induces the witch doctor to take them to the temple cave. From there, they feel that they can escape to join the cruiser. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. Quite an air of uh, almost celebration. Uh, yes, of course, Clayton. Uh, these blacks are so absolutely sure that we will be able to return this lost spirit to the mummy, which, of course, they believe will bring rain, that uh, we'll look about. See the pitiable condition they are in as a result of drought. Yes, but don't forget, the more they think of us now, the worse our position will be when they discover the fraud. And discover it, they will. Why should they, Philander? Why? Because we won't be able to bring the rain, for one thing. For another, that witch doctor is not going to give up his supremacy without some effort to discredit us. Well, I wasn't in sympathy with the scheme at first. But now I think the witch doctor is so completely out of it that I have some hope. Uh, why, uh, by the way, uh, why don't we start for the key? Uh, where is Darno? He's getting ready. He's talking to the witch doctor when I left him. You know, I think it's rather peculiar that we haven't heard any more shots. I mean, I thought at first that they might have been fired as a signal. On the other hand, Clayton, it's quite possible that another safari is in the neighborhood. I don't think that's likely. I've never heard of a white man exploring this particular part of Africa. It's so very inaccessible. Uh, what about big game hunters? Mm, possible, but hardly probable. When we know that big game can be found in other sections, much easier to reach. Yes, yeah, come, monsieur. All is ready. We can proceed on our way. Where the deuce is your rifle? At the hut, and do not mention it. I, I had quite an argument with the witch doctor. He says that if we are as good as we claim, we do not need the white man's guns. I was suspicious of that witch doctor. He had a very nasty look in his eyes. Well, the only thing to do, monsieur, is to go on and hope that some better situation presents itself. I shall suggest, however, that you each hide your revolvers, so that if the witch doctor insists upon taking the rifles, he may not think of the smaller arm. We should have killed that blighter when we had the chance. Uh, perhaps, monsieur, is right, but come, we are ready. <laughs> Uh, 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 Darno, have you any idea as to how far this, this cave might be? Uh, pas exactement, monsieur le professeur. Not exactly, but it cannot be far. The natives go and come quite frequently. And also, the natives do not enter the cave. It is taboo. At least that's something to be thankful for. I hate the very sight of it. Really, it's quite amazing how one steps out of the clearing about the crawl and steps, as it were, right into virgin jungle. Ah, 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 the witch doctor is certainly keeping his eye on us. He watches our every move and, and almost listens as though he understood what we were saying. Mm, but, uh, perhaps he does. Uh, not the words, monsieur, but the thoughts. If I may offer my advice, I should say as little talking as possible. <laughs> Back on the platform in the trees, Jane and Tarzan watch the jungle awaken to a new day. The night mist still hangs in shadowy festoons about the treetops. The animal trails, black gashes in the forest by night, are now alive with the scurrying, adding, shuffling noise of feet as the jungle brutes make their way to the water hole. Distant mingled roars rend the forest hollowness as Numa and his lion pack clear a pathway to the pool. Another jungle day, White Skin. All pretty much alike. Something gets killed, or just escapes getting killed. Numa, Tabor, Cheetah, hungry, kill, eat. Of course, that's nature. They have to kill something when they're hungry. But what I don't like is the idea that I may someday provide a near dinner for Numa or some of his companions. Jane got gun, kill Numa, Tabor. No, white skin. A revolver is not of much use against Numa or any other really big beast. With the mention of the gun, Tarzan is reminded that his supply of arrows is low. He points to the almost empty quiver. White skin go. Black village. Get arrows. Come back quick. This time, Jane go too. Jane no go, black village. Jane frightened. Black man eat. I don't doubt I'll be frightened. 
but I'm not going to be left alone this time. If Father is there, no, no, like in Jane's goal. That quality which brooks no refusal is apparent in Jane's voice. And so Tarzan, with a gesture of resignation, picks Jane up in his arms and starts off into the upper jungle terrace. Although Tarzan's graceful swings and deft catches are leisurely, Jane feels herself being borne along at breathtaking speed. Through the occasional sparseness of the treetops comes the darting rays of tropic sunlight, the cloudless blue of azure skies, the never-ending chatter of monkeys, the ceaseless chirping of birds, and the intermittent howls of the larger beasts are almost commonplace to Jane, and it is with a shock that the girl realizes it. Before, when she had allowed herself to think, her wishes had been fathered to the thought that each day would bring rescue. Now, she's almost accepting the inevitable... She feels her heart beat faster. She grows almost panicky. Much as she likes white skin, to think of ending her days in this vicious, terror-ridden jungle, the thought almost overcomes her. She feels herself being gently shaken, opens her eyes and looks below. There is the cannibal village and the file of blacks disappearing into the jungle. Tarzan lowers Jane to a broad branch. Jane, stay. White skin, go below. No, Jane, go below, too. Without a word, Tarzan again takes Jane in his arms and with noiseless, effortless ease carries her to the ground. Jane looks about, finds herself within the stockade of thorn and bamboo. The place is deserted, quiet, too quiet for comfort. Oh, black man, he go, go away. Yes, let's look around. I wonder, I wonder what's in here. Yes, white skin, you'll have to bend down to get into this hut. Oh, my white skin, look, daddy's glasses, and some of the different glasses things, and there's that old carpet there. Father? Yes? Father no kill. What do you mean? How do you know? Black man kill father. Black man take all these. Yes. Then they may be in Tababaha. I'm going to look. Fight him. Go get arrows. Jane, go in many huts. Tarzan makes for the chief's hut where he knows he will find a plentiful supply of arrows. Jane goes from hut to hut, finding nothing until she comes to the one in which the arms are piled. She takes another revolver from the heap of arms and continues her search. Now only one hut remains. She's almost despaired of finding her further trace of her father, and she bends down to enter the last hut. A warning feeling of danger stops her. She steps back, but too late. A black arm shoots out. It grips her about the neck. She struggles and tries to cry out. The black pulls the girl into the hut. Jane kicks out with her foot. There's a howl of agony. The strangling grip relaxes. She screams and... Meanwhile, Professor Porter and the party have reached the cave, which the natives call their temple. Not very inviting, is it? Uh, no, no place, sir. But I can for the life of me see how, how one can get into the cave. Not unless we jump through that solid screen of tumbling water. And one slip. Uh, down into that boiling pit of seething water. Of course, we can't tell. Uh, there may be a ledge just behind the waterfall. All we would get would be a good soaking. Well, Mr. Witch Doctor is going right ahead. And I think I once said that what that black blighter can do, so can I. He looks very much as if we were right, uh, you were right to him, your surmise, Philander. See, uh, the Witch Doctor jumped right into and through it. Then here I go. Come, Monsieur the Professor, Monsieur Philander. I'm too old for this sort of strange oh, exercise. Come on, come on, Archimedes. It's quite a short jump. Come on. Quite a place. And incidentally, flooded with water. Uh, yes, and I don't care how quickly we get out of it. I don't think we'll find Jane here. No, no, monsieur, of course not. But the witch doctor was so, so insistent that we come here that in order not to precipitate anything, I thought we had better hope Of course, of course. And in fact, now that we know that the natives will not come in here, I think it's very necessary that we arrive at some sort of a definite agreement with this witch doctor. Well, where is it? I can't see a blessed thing, except that the roof of this place seems to be mile high. I myself cannot see any too well either. Uh, But the the witch doctor was standing by me just a moment ago. Just a moment, I'll strike a light. I have, uh, at least I think I have, a a box of matches. Uh, Here they are. Now, what a huge place. Uh, Here, Pilag, hold a light close to this wall beside me. Isn't this strange? Uh, that's it, Philander. 
Never mind. Oh, never right, mind. Right, okay. uh, look here. Uh, run your hand over this design. Don't you see? You can follow the outline with your hand. Evidences of an ancient people. Uh, another match, yes, yes, please, yes, please. Yes, sir. The design is influenced by the Egyptian and somewhat Semitic. Evidence of more than that, Professor. Eh? Hey, what, Clayton? The witch doctor has disappeared. But that's impossible, Clayton. I've been standing here all the time. He couldn't get out without passing me. Well, he's not here. There must be some other way out. Monsieur Clayton is right. It is one thing to jump down six or seven feet into a cavern. It is something else to try to jump out. You think? You mean that we are in a trap? Exactly, Professor. And like a bunch of children, we not only walk into it, we jump in. Can Tarzan reach Jane in time? And what of the professor and his party? Can they get out of the trap laid by the crafty witch doctor? This is an